Welcome back to the Next Level Show. This is a Wednesday episode. We're going to be covering main topic is going to be everything you need to do for weight gain. And we're talking about quality weight gain. We're not talking about adding 20 pounds uh, of just fat to your body and then just a cut and then go back to the same thing we were before you began the bulk. Bulking is hard. I think a lot of people misunderstand the difficulty of packing on quality weight. Um, we A lot of the fitness information is catered towards weight loss, but no one talks about the struggle what we went through, right? The, the little guys, the guys are trying to pack on mass. Um, it was a grind, man. It was a full-time job, just shoveling food 24 seven, just dirty bulking, eating. Basically you never felt, I never felt hunger for like five years. I think I was just well, always satiated. I, I want to say before, before our, our, our ladies hit the next button or the back button or just go somewhere else. If you want to like grow your glutes, you, you technically want to bulk. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, this absolutely. doesn't just this, apply to being a bro and getting bigger arms. It, it, it applies to all muscle groups. Absolutely. This is going to be catered towards women as well as our men. Um, obviously, because a lot of women catered come to the to human. Us, catered to the human being as a whole. Um, we're, we're all about equality here. Um, so <laughs> it's, it, uh, it all boils down to basically if you want to put on muscle, you want to change your physique in the sense of you, you want um, – your for guys you want your shirts to be tighter ladies you want your 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 the area of your butt on your pants to get tighter you're gonna have to eat a little bit more you can't go on these low calorie diets all the time but we're gonna get into that more in detail as the episode progress mike does a fantastic job at doing the show notes you can go down on the bottom of this episode wherever whether you're watching it on youtube listening to it uh on apple Podcasts, spotify google play you name it um as well as you're new to the to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We drop about three episodes a week. Leave us a five-star rating review. This is going to help us get out there. If you like anything on this show at any given point, screenshot it. Also, you can share it on Instagram, tag at the next level show or any of us. So we can go ahead and thank you. Mike? I, um, I, I have to interrupt. Random thought just occurred to me. Um, first of all, do you guys believe that we are alone in this universe? No. no. Not fully, no. Not fully, no. Okay. Do you think an alien would still respond to progressive overload in the same way that a human does. <laughs> yes. It depends, I guess on, uh, yeah, if I'd they live yes. on earth, if they live on earth, they would have to go it to would... our gravity, gra- uh, gravity standards. Yeah. Well, I mean, on their own gravity, uh, on their own planet, or even in space, I mean, the concept would still apply. You're just progressively overloading the muscle, but I guess it would depend on like, I don't even what know. What are they made of? What are they we made need... of? Yeah, exactly. We need, do they have muscle fibers or are they like, Goop. Someone well, they're get, always they're always skinny. Someone get Anytime Neil deGrasse you, Titan Tyson on uh, here. We need we need answers. Yes. So um, a point Paul, being, if aliens do respond to progressive overload, then this is not just for humans. This is for literally every living being in the in the galaxy, maybe even the universe. Mm-hmm. Outside no. of it. Don't 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 limit yourself. This doesn't apply to jellyfish. Um they don't have mass. Fuck. <laughs> so not everybody but if you're uh typically you're a human being for now this will be catered towards you i don't have experience with the extraterrestrial uh life so anyways before that because i know someone's gonna say some shit on this podcast i got my invisalign yesterday so i will lisp from time to time it's just gonna be part of until i get used to these things and break them in so gabe hasn't you know, noticed yet i don't think fully i haven't noticed that you lift when you're talking until right now yeah well <laughs> i bro, really didn't it, <laughs> it gets hard i'm literally trying to enunciate everything and it's hard because like it's um i'm noticing that like it my teeth don't sit properly uh-huh. and uh it has enough bulk that yeah you I, there's certain words if i don't really slow down and try to say it it will come out i speak like uh espanol like if i'm from espana tío. um they sound go. just like that it would be the just only like pl- if i was living over there it'd be perfect because then i would uh-huh. have n- no issue communicating over there they don't pronounce certain letters and they always just for the uh, s they use the the z sound the zeta zeta there you go <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm fully spaniard now that's basically how this episode is going to go but shout okay. out to my dentist he supports the show tremendously dr rodriguez hooked it up yesterday got me all taken care of now i'm starting 40 weeks 40 trays oh, wow. that i have to go through um to hit perfection basically 
I'll be the perfect human. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I just got a, I got a comment like that. Like you're really, you're trying to get perfect or you're trying to hit perfection or something like that. And I'm like, bro, it's not even my final form. This is what's Dragon wrong Ball, with that. Right? Shouldn't we all? Yeah. But this is a Dragon Ball Z reference. Anybody <laughs> that gets it, you know, it's not even my final form. There you go. Um, we're only getting better here at the next level show. Um, but just wanted to put but, that out there. I will list from time to time. I'm going to I'm gonna sound like Tyson. And um, I'm all I'm all for it. You, everyone well, respects Tyson, though. Oh, hold on. But why is that almost sometimes seen as like a negative, like trying to either better yourself or you're saying, oh, you're trying to be perfect. Or are you trying to do this? And what's, what's the matter? What's, what's wrong with that? Yeah, I'm not against it. That's why even on the show, the first episode we did for we pub, we, we published on YouTube was all about that. You know, main reason people get into this space or go on this uh, this path of personal growth and development is to uh, to get better and look better naked. So <laughs> exactly. But even outside of that, right? I mean, like why if, if someone wants to, I don't know, get, do anything, improve themselves in, in, in any area. What's it to you? Mike, does it bother you that he that is, it, is it taking anything away from you? No, right? No, exactly. See? Actually, I'm lying. There is something being taken away from everyone else if John does get better. That is more, more, more chicks. You will be taking away more chicks from from everyone else. Not us, uh, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a horse in that race. Yeah, we don't. Me, <laughs> me, me and Mike are out of that race. You can. You can take them all. But uh, let me ask you guys a question. Totally random. So we've we've had uh, I guess conversations here before. Like uh, you know, what do you do? Like in the bathroom, toilet. You know, do you do a nest? Do you do a uh, hover or whatever? But what about after you take a shower? Do you like pat yourself dry, air dry? Do you just like, you know, wipe the, you know, just the, the water right off you? Do you just scrub yourself? Because Jennifer, sometimes she gives me shit about this. So I get out and I just, you know how you would dry your hands? I do the same thing except on top, on, on my body. What do you mean? Like, how do you do your hands? Well, I just dry off. Like I take the towel and I just literally oh. dry myself off. Like I rub mm. the towel on me to, to get the water off. Mm. And she's like, why are you doing this? You shouldn't do that. You should either pat dry or air dry. And I'm just like, eh, I don't got time for that. Or, or some, or some people, they, they would get like a blow dryer on themselves. Yeah. Yes. I, that's the thing. That's it. That I knew somebody that used to use the blow dryer. Um, it seemed for kinda, their body. I don't know. But I don't have, I, like Gabe says, I don't have time. I wake up with just enough time to get ready. Now I will say this. I have for the most part, I'll kind of just like quickly like wipe, um, on the other areas. I usually pat dry um i'm usually pretty gentle with myself but um uh, it depends it honestly depends one thing i stopped scrubbing like like trying to wipe the water is uh my hair like i read a while back years ago that it's better to for your hair to pat dry because it doesn't break the hair uh follicles you say um so i usually pat dry i leave it a little bit damp and then when i do uh if, I, if i'm gonna style it or anything i'll just use the, blo the air the blow dryer and i'll just have it a little bit of uh, moisture allows i guess for better hair treatment so mm -hmm. if you if you're someone that's noticing that you're you when you wipe too hard you might break some of those hair follicles and they will they, your hair will just kind of break and some little pieces may come out so that's usually why it's happening so just kind of pat dry your hair and that's the only thing i would recommend take note mike i do so now that I'm thinking about it, because I have like chest hair and leg hair, that kind of like holds on to water. So that's more of like a like a wipe dry. Um, I don't have much or any hair on my back. So that's kind of just like a quick little whoops, and then it's done. So I guess it kind of depends. Maybe a little mm -hmm. bit of both. Um, I don't, I've never really thought about yeah. how I dry myself off though. I mean, that's just like, I'm like, okay, I'm done showering. It's time to not be wet anymore. <laughs> and then I'm done. So it, that's a so, weird thing to. I had a, I, I, had a que I had a question for you guys. Cause um, we were starting to talk about this before we got on air, but um, I think it would make for a great conversation. Uh, the only reason we tr were talking about it, cause I played a clip off air for the guys. I was listening to something on, on Instagram about the upcoming fight with um, Conor McGregor with Dustin Poirier. Um, the trilogy fight, it's happening July 10th. This will play about in a week. Yep. So it's like roughly July 10th. Um, there was a comment made about shooting, like in fighting mixed martial arts, shooting means when you attack, when you go for a tackle, basically a wrestle a shot, you go lift the person. Double leg takedown. Double leg takedown. Jiu-jitsu has this. Any type of grappling fighting styles have this. Um, I, Gabe says 
And if he was in a situation, that's what he would do. So I was yes. like, going to ask all the guys, you know, Mike being included here, if you were in a fight, what would be your, would you try to take the fight to the ground or would you try to stay on your feet and fight? I gouge. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I gouge. But, but, uh, but did you, you get have, that you, from but, Captain but Insano? Would... Captain Insano shows no mercy. Exactly. Um, no, honestly, I have, I have absolutely no idea. But, but in your mind, if like someone was uh, squaring up to you and be like, you well, knew there was no way out of this. In my mind, I'm one punch man. So I don't, I don't know. I, I reasonably don't have like a, a realistic answer. I've never actually been in a fight before, so I don't even know how I would respond. So, so here's, here's my reasoning for why I would go for like a shoot or, or, or take it to the ground. So John, you, you've been, you know, you practice, you know, throwing punches, kicks and stuff like that. How easy or how, I guess, much more effort or how much did you have to learn in order to throw a proper punch? You know, how many people know how to throw a proper punch without breaking their hand? I mean, if you don't, you can either A, cause no harm, B, cause more harm to yourself. Maybe you hit them right. Maybe you hit them in the wrong spot. Who knows? There's a whole bunch of other kind of things. I don't have time to think about all of that stuff. So I would try to take it to the ground and just either do some kind of like, you know, ground and pound or, you know, just choke them out or, or, or do something. I don't know. That, that, that would be my go to like a slam. I would be more of a, either grappling or takedown or picking them up and putting them down in a not so gentle fashion. You know what? Now, now that you mentioned that, yeah, I think I would probably go for like a. I, I would try to rely on my strength. So yeah, maybe yeah. maybe try to like muscle someone to the ground or like pick them up and like throw them or slam them or something like that. Um, just because yeah, I'm not I'm not super confident, you know, like punching people or mm -hmm. doing anything like that. I suppose given the right circumstance, I'm, I'm not like a averse to, to punching somebody in the face if they absolutely deserve it. But um, that that wouldn't be the my my strong suit, I guess. Okay, so this is actually a great topic. So I heard this on another podcast uh, a couple months ago. Uh, shout out to Andrew Tate. And Andrew Tate, you guys might not know who he is, but he's like a professional kickboxer, uh, world champion back a couple years ago, and he's a he's a kickboxer. So he and he has been in scuffles. He has said not many, but he has been in some outside of the ring confrontations. Now, a lot of people normally say that most fights end up on the ground. That's why Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has been so popular lately it's all about grappling knowing like uh submissions and so on and so forth um it was funny because he goes out and boldly says that these two fighting styles are uh stupid they are almost useless in real life outside of the ring outside of the octagon outside of a, really? out of a out of a out of a tournament and he explains this reason why and it kind of it makes sense too and I thought about this too, because when I got my, I have been in two fights my entire life, one big one where I was being jumped. Basically I had multiple people that I was fighting off. Um, luckily I didn't get hurt. Like I didn't get, I didn't get a clean shot to like the front of my face. I only got hit from behind and I was able to kind of get out. And I had two other buddies that jumped in. There was like 13 people. This was in high school. It was a big, big deal in school. Um, so basically I realized that I, for the most part, stayed on my feet. Now I didn't think about as to why, but it makes sense. For the most part, especially me being smaller, I'm only uh, five seven. I weigh about 165, 168 pounds on average. Most people that I will maybe get into a confrontation, this in this situation, it was they are bigger than me. They are taller. They are much heavier than I am. So for the most part, sure, I'm low to the ground. I can pro if I know how to properly take do a double a double like takedown, I can probably throw you to the floor. The problem is this: most submissions don't work in real life because if you're all you know is uh, mm -hmm. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling. It is almost useless if someone knows how to bite, someone knows how to eye gouge, someone can hit you, or, an, uh, or uh, there's another person that you don't know, it's going to come and kick you in the face while you're on the floor. Uh, most submissions don't work because they require time, they require precision, and um, you know, you're not going to try to sit there while someone is going to come and football kick you in the face. Um, so basically, like, so they say, like, even in the whole Krav Maga notion is the Israelian style fighting, which is... Uh, it, it shows some type of striking, but it also does some things with takedowns, uh, locks, and um, uh, weapon dis like disarming weapons like knives, guns. He 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 even he even shits on. And I've I've done a little bit of everything. I've kind of been learning a little bit of all these things, and it makes sense because I really think about it. If a gun is pointed at me, realistically, the accuracy that I would have to have that most people don't have 
would be so fast and precise that your chances are still very high at getting shot, stabbed. You know, if someone's with an AK and someone's pointing at you, you're not going to just, people on the, the no. video can see me, like, you'd be like disarmed. You're basically screwed, in other words. So he says the, the main thing he would recommend someone to that if you need to learn a little bit just to defend yourself and be in a fighting situation, it's not even kickboxing. And he's a kickboxer. He's like, I'm, it's not even kickboxing because in real, in, in real situations, if you think about it, where do most fights happen with men? Typically, it's in a bar or some type of setting that's kind of compact. There's a lot of bumping and going on and someone's like drinking too much and they get that liquid courage and they're going to start, they're going to start problems. Even kicking is a disadvantage in real life because yeah. you don't know if, the, if you're on, if you're on wet grass or in a slippery, uh, slippery floor, your kicking requires space and balance. If you, for whatever reason, lose your balance, you're already on the ground again. So it's like you, you your main, if you want to learn how to fight, Defend yourself for the most part in, in most everyday situations that may happen. Learn how to box properly. Typically, all you need is to be able to throw a good set of combinations or a good, strong, solid, quick shot and get out of the situation as fast as possible. Don't stick around. Get out, get in, and leave. Because you never know. Nowadays, people carry. People have weapons. There may be more people. So he says that if you anybody wants to learn how to defend themselves, sure, there's all these other notions as to, oh, you need to learn how to do this. Like I said, most situations, your, your, your goal is not to be stuck in a fight for a very long time. So you want to be able to throw a punch, get in and out. And, you know, especially if I'm smaller, I have a, a more of an advantage. If I can punch you really quickly and you can't grab me, then I'm in a disadvantage. Yeah. If you're six foot four, 200 plus pounds, you're going to be a lot stronger than I am just physically grappling. Sure, I should know some type of stuff to get out. But in most cases, I'm not going to try to get held down because that's a disadvantage to me. When I got in my fight years ago, I remember I kept opening space. Naturally, this is just instinctually uh, punching, blocking and not getting hit in the face and not getting taken down. The guy was trying to like swing aggressively, grab me. I would just elbow, hit, open up space and keep opening. It almost looked like I was running, but I kept him in front of me at all times so I could see what was happening. Um, so I don't get someone from behind me taking me out, so on and so forth. So. That was uh, my understanding for shooting is actually not the best thing to do. If you're in a fight, don't try to go to the ground because uh, <laughs> you may, may or not end up getting hurt. Oh, all right. Well, I'll keep that top of mind next, <laughs> the next fight that I'm in, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I would just, again, I'm not too comfortable or too confident in how I guess my striking ability, I guess it would be, I, I, if I throw something, I guess it'd be okay. But um, I would feel more, com more comfortable um shooting so that's why i would lean towards that you saying that makes more sense and i guess i gotta go hit the hit the hit the punching bag or something man it does help a lot i would definitely recommend gabe if you ever want to come in we have a lot of equipment we have extra gloves head head pieces and we have the bag so we can practice with the pads and stuff it helps okay. man it really does it's i think every person should know how to throw some a couple punches properly Mm -hmm. And basic blocking. You need to just not get hit. That's the big thing is you don't want to get hit. And you, the, the truth of the matter is that I'm not even advocating for fighting because it's dangerous. Stay alive. People are crazy nowadays. You don't put yourself in situations where you could get hurt. So, yeah. Mike? You guys want some random facts that have nothing to do with anything? Sure. The best kind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's... Number one, uh, aside from humans, what is the deadliest animal in the world? A uh, hippo. Jonathan? I, would say, I would say a hippo. Animal? Uh, yeah, animal. Mosquitoes. Hmm. Yeah. Not by virtue of like them eating or killing. It's the diseases they carry. Disparate malaria. Um, yeah. Here's one that doesn't require a guess. Um, did you know, this is actually kind of weird, Miss Piggy and Yoda were voiced by the same person. What? Frank, Frank Oz. Yeah. What? Same person. Also, no, no guessing required on this one either. The first movie to ever show a toilet flushing was the movie Psycho. Really? Now you know. Huh. That's interesting. Wow. There you go. Gabe, you have something for us before we jump into <laughs> our topic. Yes. So I saw this, uh, Jennifer showed this to me uh, yesterday. Weird thing that she saw online. It says a uh, new weight loss dental tool linked uh, to medieval torture device. 
So what it is, is you essentially, you attach two magnets to the, what do you, what do you call those? Like the molars? Yeah. Like the back part of your teeth? Yeah. And I guess they activate at some point in time and they are strong magnets. So it prevents you from opening your mouth. And if you can't open your mouth, what can't you do? You can't eat. So Wait, that's how you chew. can't, correct. You can't put anything inside your mouth to chew. Yeah. So that's that. That's how they're promoting a uh, weight loss. It's called a uh, dental slim diet control, and it and it allows users to open their mouths only two millimeters wide. You know, I I have a bunch of different issues with this that are just kind of compound upon each other. But mm -hmm. the biggest one that I have is that they're assuming that somebody that really wants to won't be able to just have like six milkshakes in a day. But why would you? I put mean, that's. That I guess, yeah. It, I mean, it. I, I'm just assuming, like, literally, worst case scenario, like this person figures they have to do nothing else except get this tooth thing. There's nothing stopping them from getting a bunch of milkshakes and getting four thousand calories out of milk, sugar, and ice cream. Well, they'll just I, juice I, everything. They'll just juice their dinner. that too. I mean, yeah, liquid calories are probably the the worst offender that we have right now. So it's. I don't know. It just seems kind of fucking you, stupid. Can you My imagine basic... the taste of that of something juiced like a like, like let's just say you know I don't know a McDonald's meal or just chicken and just rice. Like I mean I I mean I blended juiced. chicken and rice. Have you? Yes. Yeah. How was it? Well, I had this when I had my wisdom teeth and I was still trying to bulk and get calories in. I had mass gainer shakes with ice cream. And I also, um, dude, I'm, I was a savage. I didn't care. But no, if you think about it, though, it's like you're making, um, it's like a soup, like a chicken noodle mm -hmm. soup, with, but we, I add rice and then we blend it and it's, it's just thicker, but it tastes good. I mean, it's like chicken noodle soup. It just has the flavor. Oh. Yeah. It just, it, it, it seems like it would not go well together. Yeah, not I've, like literally um, taking the dry portion of it. I'm not saying that. You would put like water, boil it. It would be all cooked, seasoned, and you just blend it all together and you just kind of drink it like a soup. Okay. I've I've heard of um I I can't remember who it was, but it was a celebrity interview where they were talking about how they had to start blending up their chicken to get enough protein in because they were on some, you know, celebrity trainer yeah. diet workout routine it and works. their, their jaw just, they couldn't handle chewing all that chicken anymore. So they started blending it. No, I mean, you, sometimes you just do whatever you got to do. This is actually okay. like a good, like the thing I think about with this just real quick is it says you can only open about two millimeters. Yes. How do you, how do you speak? Well, you talk like this. Like or you don't I'm even open up your mouth. Exactly. Like it's it's very impractical. I mean, that's like the worst invention ever. Just because I'm even noticing now, just having these things, I have to open my mouth even more so I don't lift on the show as much. Um, so I can't imagine being like this, talking like this the whole time. Who talking thinks of the these podcast. things? Who thinks this know. is a good idea? When all else fails, you go to the most extreme, I guess. Yeah. Uh, did it fail? Did it all fail though? I'm also thinking, uh, well, you know what I mean, but I'm talking about like, I think about also the talking part and the fact that I'm afraid my tooth is going to fucking break. Like mm -hmm. having these magnetic forces on your side of your mouth and then just pulling too fast on eyes. Is it magnets? I, I, I assumed it was a magnet. It looks like it's a magnet or maybe it's, I don't know. It's, it's something like a chast it's like a chastity lock on your mouth. Basically. But Terrible. I think this this, this kind of allows us to segue. Uh, Mike, you have you, a hard cut off around. Two, you would hate 15? to meet someone with that on, right? Two o'clock, two fifteen, somewhere around there. Cool. All right. <laughs> I would hate to meet this guy, um, <laughs> <laughs> or it wouldn't bother you. <laughs> <laughs> it would allow for a, a more quiet evening, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, no. So, like, the topic that we had in mind was about weight gain. We mentioned this at the beginning of the show. Um, segueing, obviously this, uh, this tooth device is for weight loss to control someone eating X amount of calories, which we kind of already found flaws in that theory, which is, I don't think that's an actual thing anymore, but, um, weight gain. A lot of people, uh, don't talk enough about this. I rarely make content about this either. And it's mainly because the people that you look, you, you help for the most part are trying to, uh, lose weight. And the most people that hire coaches or seek out help is in this realm. It's very rare if I get a client that wants to gain a substantial amount of weight. You get them here and there, but it's not as much. So 
but we'll kind of make an episode on this because I think this is super important. We make a lot of fat loss episodes. Uh, there it goes. Uh, but weight gain is actually one that's close to us. And like we said, also for the ladies, this actually does apply to you as well, especially if you're coming in with uh, big booty goals and you want something like that, bigger legs, um, a nice back, uh, better hip to uh, hip to waist ratio. Um, all these things are going to come into factor. You you're going to c- want to pack on quality uh, weight, you know, in this in the form of muscle, lean body mass, minimize the body fat. The goal is to be always in a healthy range of body fat. You don't need to be super lean at any given point unless you're trying to compete but for the average long-term health. A little bit of body fat is accept, uh, uh, acceptable, but you want to be primarily uh, more lean mass. Um, this is going to give you a better look. Your clothes are going to fit a lot better. Your proportions and ratios are going to be, for men and women, are going to be a lot better. For ma- for guys, you really want to focus on keeping that that shoulder to waist ratio Um you know, broader shoulders to waist. I forget the exact percentage uh, or point system that they use. Uh, I'll look that up for another episode. But basically, this is also why the the reason behind the next level show, the, the letters are in a different color. If you notice in watching this episode or looking at the logo, the red, the X and the V, the X represents the body, the full body propor- proportions and symmetry, broad shoulders, little waist, um, decent size, uh, lower body. Um, then the V taper is the, the representation for a man, you know, uh, a guy with a nice V taper typically looks more masculine, looks more attractive and health, and it also symbolizes, uh, at, at certain points health. So a little bit of, uh, if you, for those that didn't know, but, uh, what are some things that we can kind of dive into when it comes to weight gain? What is something that we can start with for our audience? Uh, well, I guess first would be, let's just say if this is not you, you, you thinking that, okay, I don't want to gain weight. Sometimes this, you know, y- your coach would tell you, Hey, you know, for the first couple of weeks or, Hey, let's focus on, um, ha- packing on, uh, you know, adding some weight and not so much as weight. It's more of like, we want to add some more muscle mass to you. And this would, if you're someone that wants to get stronger, you know, how you can only get s- stronger if you add more muscle mass. And if you add more muscle mass, more than likely you will have um, some weight gain, right? And I'm not talking about like, you know, 30 pounds, because if you get 30 pounds of muscle mass, I don't know what it is that you're on or whom you are. You may be the alien. Maybe this is the extraterrestrial that we're talking about. But um, for the most part, you will be um, adding on some weight to yourself. And this would be a, 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 an instance where weight gain would be um, ideal we would want to um, gain some weight in the sense of adding muscle mass to our body. Yeah. And I would, um, I I would say that this is probably just as much of a misconception as the other end of the spectrum where, you know, some people think weight loss and they, they cut their calories ridiculously low. Um, And then I'm pretty sure we've all been to this point in our lives where we think, I want to gain weight. I'm e- I'm eating literally everything, everything I can see or get my hands on. I'm going to eat 6,000 calories a day because that's what I should do without any basis in reality. Let's chase it, my protein. Yeah. All of it. So okay. it doesn't necessarily have to be this big drastic change from one to the other uh, on both sides of the spectrum, but more specifically for bulking, you don't have to eat literally everything in your house every single day. So I will say this cause um when I was doing this back when I was like, like 130 something, 140 pounds, um, I took that advice of just eating. That was the advice to just eat a yep. lot. I, this is before tracking. This is before understanding protein, uh, consumption. I just knew that protein was a very big thing. I needed to eat as much of that as possible. I'm probably over eight at some points. Um, but just get calories and, uh, your body needs it to pack on weight. Uh, when I was consistent with it, I noticed that I started getting heavier, my strength started going up and I started putting on muscle. Obviously, body fat came with it at one point. Um, you, can start, you start getting diminishing returns. I will say this though, if you're young and you're really skinny, like be honest with yourself, are you really thin? Are you someone that you know has the, you're very lean, but your, your body fat, your weight for your size is even on, a, on the unhealthy side because you can be too skinny for your size, right? Um, or you struggle with putting on weight, you just don't have an appetite. And you don't want to get into tracking and all that. Honestly, the whole eat everything, eat as much as you can um, for me is wasn't always the worst advice. 
obviously we're going to give you some more tangible, maybe some better metrics to follow. That way you're not just eating to the point of pain and, and discomfort because that's not the point either. But uh, for the most part, a lot of people can spend a good amount of the time just lifting heavy, focusing on strength, having fun, and just making sure that they're eating uh, X amount of meals a day uh, and just continue to bump it up. You shouldn't feel uh, uh, a lot of hunger. You should feel pretty satiated uh, most of the time. You can allow yourself to have a break. But uh, the problem with people that struggle in this camp, and, and this is me, this is like my uh, a lot of my friends as well, even you guys, you can probably say this. The appetite wasn't always that crazy, but when you did eat, you did eat a lot. Now we know that over the course of the average, you know, the average week to week uh, basis, you want to make sure that you're eating in a surplus just because you ate a lot on the weekend doesn't mean that you're eating enough for the week. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, I always try to keep food on me. Uh, this is when meal frequency came into play. These are non-tracking tips, but definitely I would say spend a good amount of time just getting into the habit of eating and prioritizing your meals because this will allow you to continuously to gain size. And for the most part, if, like I said, if you're really skinny, don't worry about fat gain right now. It's going to take a lot more than you think, especially if you're active, especially if you're, uh, if you're lifting heavy and getting stronger. Yeah. And that was me where I, I can echo that same segment where I wasn't, I don't think I was ever at a point where I said, no, 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 this is too much. I can't have any more. Um, if a plate was in front of me, I'd eat it, but I wouldn't actively go out looking for to serve myself another plate. Right. So, um, and I did this the total wrong way when I wanted to bulk, when I, when I tried to get up to 200 pounds where I would literally have in my desk, like a Costco size bag of trail mix, I would have like, you know, three to four, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, um, that I would just have, you know, as I'm driving, uh, not all at once. I would have, uh, I don't know, just anything and everything in, in sight, in arm's reach, where I can eat and easily kind of grab onto to uh, to to pack on as much like you know weight as I can because I try to just, however, whatever means, however means necessary, and I, I I did it the complete wrong way. You know, I should have been more mindful as far as to you know what I'm putting in my body, the tracking of it, um, seeing what's going on there because the appetite wasn't the issue. Oh, and I told you guys this one thing that I used to do on Tuesdays was like an all you can eat pizza at some place. I used to just mm -hmm. go with my gallon of water and I just sit down and I just probably like crush like maybe. I don't know, pie and a half, if I want to total, and, I mean, and then I, just leave. Every Monday, I used to do uh, go to Fire Guys with my buddy. I used to have a lot of gym friends. We used to like really just make this a part of our hangout. Go to the uh, go to Five Guys, get a triple triple patty burger uh, with the fries and a um, uh, fruit punch drink. So obviously, I'm drinking the calories there as well. So easily about like almost three thousand calories probably in that meal, most with likely give or take. Uh, I was never a big fan, but um, just mainly the drink, the fries, and the and the burger every Monday, um, just to train like about an hour or two before training, and I had the re most ridiculous pump. The problem was that my cholesterol started suffering, so I had to stop that. Uh, yep. My my primary <laughs> doctor told me like, "Man, your your cholesterol numbers are pretty high." I was like, "Man, I I don't know. I eat pretty healthy." I didn't tell him that I was do what I was doing though. Um, it goes to show that people lie even when they give you the information even as a coach people will won't always be honest but um yeah i was doing stuff that probably wasn't that advantageous but the main thing here is this if you're struggling the, the basics of it is eating now i think we can get into more maybe some some metrics that people can maybe follow you know we've always preached for, for tracking especially to start out for our weight loss uh clients and people that were that ask us these questions Tracking is also advantageous if you're trying to bulk because yeah. the main thing is, like we said, on average, you need to be making sure that you're in a calorie surplus. We hear, you hear a lot about calorie deficit for weight loss. It's the opposite for weight gain. You want to be in a surplus of calories, eating a, a bit more. Now, it doesn't need to be as much as you think. It doesn't need to be five or 500 to even 1,000 calories. It doesn't even need to be that high. It could You'll gain a weight a lot quicker, but you run the risk of uh, gaining more body fat. So everyone to each their own, you know, kind of have a, a gauge of where you, what you want out of the, out of the result. But for the most part, anything above that, even if it's, if you're a smaller women, if you're a smaller female, like, you know, five foot two, five foot three and under uh, about a hundred and something, hundred pounds, um, 150 to 200 calories is more than enough for you to be in a surplus and gain uh, quality weight. Now, if you're a bigger guy, you can push those, you know, up to a 500 to even a thousand calories over. If you're over six foot, 
you know, and you're pretty skinny and you have a lot of room to play with, you can probably bump those numbers up. But this is where tracking can be critical because you can also monitor your progress, see what you're, what's going on with your weight. You can also pay attention to what you're eating, uh, your uh, hunger signals and know if like, it's, it's a struggle. It's a grind. You basically have to work at it a little bit because you are going against your body's natural tendency of being full. You don't want to eat. You're not going to be hungry most of the time. And this is the problem that people's like, I just don't have an appetite. Well, of course you're, you're feeding yourself more than what your body even requires. So you have to be conscious of it. You have to make a conscious effort. So I would say tracking is the big thing. Um, being in a moderate surplus of 150 on the low end for a smaller person to about 500 to plus calories for a bigger person. Um, and we're talking about height here. Um, also finding foods that are uh, foods that you enjoy to eat that you can eat a lot of typical things that I like to do in every meal. Even when I cut is rice, um, lean sources of protein or high sources, like high calorie source of proteins, like heavy uh, calorie steaks with a lot of fat, you know, they don't fill me up as much. Um, but you get a lot of nutrients in there as well. Guys can't, can't forget the ketchup on the rice though. There you go. Extra okay. ketchup. When you, when you mentioned that we don't really need as much uh, calories as you would think, so it's it, imagine like a like a screen door or like a sliding door. You don't want to open it all the way where everything kind of comes in. Maybe some like you know you want to open it up to outside. You have some bugs coming in. You know some some critters. You don't want those inside your house. Mosquitoes. So just a little bit exactly. You don't you really don't want those. Who knows what? Remember those, that's the number one uh, deadliest deadliest animal outside of uh, humans. Oh, second place. Yeah. So, exactly. We don't want those inside. So think of. Um, not opening up the door all the way. Uh, it's just enough. Just like when we mentioned for a calorie deficit, you know, we don't want to just cut your calories by like 500,000 calories. The same would, the same rules would apply here where it's just, okay, well, just be mindful, be, be, uh, um, be cautious as to how much and how much is it? Well, it really depends on your starting point, which is why you were just so um, adamant about saying, hey, tracking can be beneficial here as well. It's not just a free for all. It's not just go ahead and just uh, go out there and get whatever the hell you want. We need to be mindful as to what we're putting in ourselves. Yeah, um, I'll take this just in a uh, practical approach. Um, when I was bulking the most recent time where things were being tracked and it was a lot um, a lot more calculated instead of just eating everything that I could find, um, I found the easiest way for me to do it was to uh, it kind of piggyback off what Jonathan said about just adding in extra calories in my meals. So, you know, maybe that meant a, a little bit more rice, but other times more often than not, I was looking for extra things that I could add to my spoon or fork. If I'm having like a rice bowl of some kind, maybe add not just black beans, but also a, a pinto beans or extra little bits of cheese or um, guacamole. A, a guacamole is another good one. And then oh, even yeah. to the point, talking about liquid calories, sometimes it, it comes to the point where you're like, okay, let me add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, which you can kind of treat almost as like, if you're adding butter to your rice, it serves the same function. It's just delivering you fats, better fats than butter, um, or avocado oil or, or whatever you want to. But the one that really stands out in my mind right now is what I would do to my, my Greek yogurt in the mornings was, you know, Greek yogurt and granola and like blueberries was like the normal. And if I was trying to like add more calories to that, I'd get seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, even um, mm -hmm. and that adds so many more calories and it takes up almost no space in my stomach because they're tiny, tiny little guys. And you're adding like two tablespoons and it adds like a hundred calories, 200 calories here and there. So you know, think of like, how can, how can I add extra to the effort that I'm already putting in? Uh, maybe it's, you know, adding something into your rice bowl or just adding a little bit of like a liquid or a seed type variant. Um, go ahead. Uh, well, I wanted to add to the liquid calorie part about, you know, just thinking it from protein shakes, you know, when you're doing a, a diet to lose body fat, you're trying to conserve or add as much volume as you can to stay in a, while staying in a deficit. So even with the calories, uh, the protein shakes, you're going to probably use water or uh, low calorie almond milk um, to not bump up the calories of the shake and just get the protein uh, calories. 
it's the opposite is true. You can go more for, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be water. It, you can add peanut butter. You can add uh, fruits. You can add stuff that has more calories in general, coconut milk, you know, whole, uh, whole fat coconut milk, stuff that's just going to add a, a good amount of calories to help because I know I was there eating everything, eating 700 calories a meal is hard. Um, so I would cheat and add one or two mass gainer shakes. I would call them because one, th- at one point they were mass gainer shakes. At one point I just started just creating my own. Um, but basically they were about like 700 and a thousand calories a piece. So it allowed me to pack on more calories. I was very active at that time too. I was playing soccer. I was uh, working an active job and I was lifting every, almost every day, like five to six times a week. Um, I probably don't have to do that nearly as much now. I can probably get away with a lot less and, and gain some quality size. But back then, if you're starting out or you've never done a bulk and you really want to build muscle, um, this can be a trick. This can be a, not a trick, a, a tip for you to implement. That's going to really make a difference. Yeah, I think uh, before I used to have like an oatmeal that was like, I don't know, maybe like 800 calories. I used to just dump everything into it. I used to have like, you know, some, some, uh, you know, some fruits, some berries, um, nuts. I used to put in like either peanut butter or almond butter in there. Um, anything and everything that I could add in there that, that really wouldn't require too much or wasn't um, so crazy. I would just go ahead and do it. And then I think uh, that's when I started tracking initially. And I found out that my breakfast, I want to say was like, 12 to 1300 calories because i would have that plus like maybe like four eggs with vegetables and uh, like an avocado and just a whole bunch of stuff and i was just like kind of taken back as to how much i was having in the morning oh yeah another another trick that i would recommend is making sure that you you eat most of your calories as fast as you can like a good chunk of them if you have uh about 3000 calories you have to hit by the end of the day I would say to hit at least 1800 to 2000 calories by half your day, whatever the time frame that that's on you. Um, That's going to allow you to not have to eat as much at night because I guess a little hard for people. Also, Mm -hmm. we know that the important thing of uh, muscle building and gaining quality size is uh, sleep. So if you're eating so much food and you're super stuffed going to bed, it's not that it's going to make you gain more fat than other, but it's going to impair your recovery. In this case, to gain weight, you also want to make sure you're sleeping adequately. So eating the bulk of your calories early on in the day will just serve you better at night. So you're actually getting better rest. You actually will wake up with more of an appetite in the morning. So you can kind of repeat this cycle. Another thing that comes to mind is uh, incorporating uh breaks like just like we do diet breaks for fat loss we want to have some days where maybe we refeed a little bit uh during depending on what part of the fat loss journey we're at for weight gain i do recommend uh incorporating days where maybe you take a break and you you either do a fast for half a day maybe that day you purposely under consume uh, uh calories just yep. so you always keep that, you give your gut a break, you give your butt, your system a break. Cause like I said, this is just as hard, if not harder for a lot of people, because if you battle with gaining weight, it's the same thing with someone that uh, battles to lose weight. Um, I think it's a little bit different. I always will say it's harder just because building new tissue takes a lot more work in my opinion, but that's just personal experience. And just from looking at the evidence, it just looks like that. But um, that's my advice as far as, you know, so you, you can, if you're struggling, that if you're just, you just don't, you just feel bad. Obviously you're probably doing too much. Check the food sources that you're eating. That's not going to make you feel like shit, inflame, or you're intolerant to make sure you're eating a lot of food that feels good for you. And then if you still don't have an appetite, do a little fast once every other week or once a month. It can be an all-day fast, uh, and then just continue that pr- that cycle, that process, that progress. Uh, oh, sorry, that process, process. over and over, profit, uh, over and over and over again. So um, those are the things that come to mind when it comes to uh, gaining weight. It's in, in the, in the, and just to highlight the importance here is if you want the desired physique, a lot of people also have to be okay with gaining a little bit of body fat in the process. It's almost it's almost impossible not to gain any you're gonna if you're someone that's super lean and you're like a you know i have a lot of my girls that are super thin and they have a nice uh, midsection but they just are very small on the legs they have barely any uh glutes um their arms are super skinny i tell them 
they show me a picture of a girl that already has gone probably through this bulking and cutting process multiple times, right? They've been lifting for a long time. I yeah. tell them like, you got to be okay with getting a little bit softer, you know, even because they're already lean. You have to be okay with getting a little softer. Your midsection is not going to be as defined, um, but that's okay because we can always get there. You already know you have the shape. Now we're just going to slowly start making sure we're lifting appropriately. We're eating just the, uh, the right amount of food. Um, that way you're gaining muscle and your physique will actually look different. You know, the problem is that a lot of people don't want to do either or so they're they're. This goes for cutting too. guys. I want to get lean and have abs for summer, but they get they don't want to lose a little bit of size in like that film and in the clothing. So it's that constant battle where you start going in that direction. Then you like pull back. And you, the same thing for fat loss, you start cutting, you get a little leaner, like, oh, fuck, my arms look small. I'm going to like start bulking up again. So I, I've done it. I was made for like it. forever. I've I done it many times as well. I get it. But you have to be okay with giving up something temporarily to chase that goal. If you can focus all your attention and going in a specific direction for a, a, for a certain amount of time, for a couple months, you will make a lot more progress and you won't spin your wheels. That way you can actually, once you're ready to cut, you can adequately cut and you fundamentally look a lot different. Your physique looks impressive. That's what bodybuilders will do. They'll go on an off season. If they do it properly, once they add those calories, they go back, boom, they have an improved physique to uh, compete with. That's a sweet spot right there. I mean, like you just, you just have to be cool with it. Just know like what the end goal is. Um, but if you, if we preface it first, um, it may be a little bit easier to, um, accept once you're on it because then you're like, okay, well, this was part of the plan. I knew going into this, that this would happen. Yep. Um, boys, any closing thoughts? Mike? No, this conversation makes me want to go back up to like 4,000 calories a day though. Honestly, me days. too. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a, um, a three month like bulk on purpose, three to four months of like being in a, in a nice surplus, bro. I love the feeling of the shirts getting tighter when yeah. you're bulking, right? Your lips are going great. Your joints feel awesome. When you cut for too long, everything fucking hurts after a while. If you're such you're <laughs> deep into a cut, it just sucks. Um, you feel small as fuck. Usually your pumps are flat. Like, you know, you're not, your muscles look flat. I'm sorry. And you're just not, you're losing strength little by little. It's starting to go down. You're like, no, yeah. Um, but obviously everything in cycles um well wrap us up boys and we can close this off mike go ahead all right um here's your riddle i'll give you two readings okay you you see a boat filled with people it has not sunk but when you look again you don't see a single person on the boat why they're downstairs so you see, a, you see a boat filled with people. It has not sunk, but when you look again, you don't see a single person on the boat. Why? They got off. No, they're they're all married. So none of them are single. It's not a single person on the boat. Wow. Yeah, that was good. Sure. <laughs> Wasn't that good? Gabe, Gabe, Gabe space when he gets Whenever defeated I, by this. I, I know when I, I'm just like, uh, okay, I should have seen that one coming. All right. All right. All right. So here, here's a, uh, I guess to, to keep the humor going. Um, so this dude, Steve, he finds this uh, genie. He says, Hey, uh, genie asks, what's your first wish? Steve replies, uh, I wish I was rich. Um, genie nodded, he said, granted. And then what's your second wish? And then rich exclaimed, uh, I want lots of money. What? He wants to be rich. He now he is now rich. Yeah. Not in the sense yeah. of money. That is yeah. his name. That was a literal uh, wish. Exactly. Um, also, the, I don't know if careful. this is going to. I don't know if this is going to be a new category or not. But this is completely random. Um, I was looking at uh, citrulline products given our conversation uh, the other day um, on Amazon, and I was like, oh, I'm going to look at the reviews. I wonder what the reviews on this looks like. Oh God. This is one of the greatest reviews I've read. Oh. It's very short. It's uh, so this is for L citrulline, like we discussed. This raises nitric oxide levels, which has various effects within the body. Uh, this is a five star review by uh, Benjamin. I'll leave his last name out. Uh, the title of the review is Made Me a Super Saiyan God in Bed. The, con the, the review itself is definitely helps in the bedroom. I could hammer in a railroad spike after taking this citrulline. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You should screenshot that and send it to us, please. 
Hey, look, the best part is that 213 people found it helpful. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm so I'm sold, you know, <laughs> bro, so please, please, please post that in our, our private Facebook group. Um, <laughs> okay. just say like, based on our, our episode, whatever that episode number was. So if you didn't believe us, here's your Here purpose. Science, <laughs> anecdotal goals and science <laughs> involved. Um, that's awesome. Well, listeners, if you guys like this episode, like this content, make sure to go ahead and check us out. Give this video a thumbs up. This also helps us a lot. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It's free. Why not? Also on Instagram, on the other platforms of iTunes, Spotify, Google play, whatever, whatever, wherever you're listening to this from, uh, make sure to give us a five-star rating review. That also signifies that the podcast needs to be found by other people. Uh, check us out on Instagram at the next level show. My personal page is at John Alva Fitness. Uh, Gabe is at Prime and Glory. And Mike, he's at Mike Nillis P. 